Hey, this is Eric. I'm going to talk about SQL, specifically SQL in the context of CardoDB. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Most people don't really talk about it this way, um, but we actually think about SQL as the language that databases understand. When you're thinking about a database, you're actually um, you're usually thinking about tables within that database. And a table is like a spreadsheet for the most part. It has columns and rows. Um, the difference between a spreadsheet and a database table when it comes to columns is that columns have names always, and columns also have types. As we've seen in CardoDB, those types can be things like numbers and strings and geometries. So when <clears throat> one way of thinking of tables in databases and SQL in particular is to think of having this giant stack of papers or records that you have to go through. And uh, maybe I say, give me just the pages that refer to properties in Brooklyn. Or maybe I say more specifically, give me the addresses of the properties in Brooklyn in this stack of paper. Um, if you had to go through this one by one, it would be, um, it wouldn't be a lot of fun. It would be a lot of work. Um, but actually, databases are great at these types of questions, and it's what they were made to do. So SQL is the language that helps you ask these questions in a way that databases will understand and give you your answers. So back to Cardo DB. The DB, in this case, stands for database, if, if you weren't aware already. Um, we have a table. And why don't I go to my table called Earthquakes? And as I was saying, we have, we have columns and we have rows. In the case of a spatial database like CardoDB, the rows are features, uh, features that have geometries and can be mapped. So whenever you load a table in CardoDB, you're actually executing an SQL query, and it's this. Select star from whatever your table is. And you can see this SQL query by going over here to the right-hand side to the SQL button, and click on that. And you can see, in this case, it says select star from earthquakes, earthquakes being the name of my table, which you can see up here in the top left. And you can change this if you really want to, um, to simplify your queries. So select, that first part of that statement, is picking columns. Um, you can list columns that you want to pick from a table. So you could list two columns if you only wanted to see those two columns. Why don't I do that? So I'll say select mag and place. You can see um, CardoDB nicely auto-completes for you, so you don't have to type the whole thing up. And usually when I'm writing SQL, it's it's nice to keep these on separate lines. Um, so you can see nothing changed, but if I hit Apply Query, things will change. And you can see that now all that shows up is mag and place. So the select star in the default statement the star actually means everything. So select star means choose everything, choose all the columns. So I can I can go back here and I can say, actually, I want to select star. And you see all the columns are back. And if I undo that, go back to just mag in place, you'll see that there's a button here that says clear view. And that will reset the SQL if you click it. where is the last part of most SQL statements, at least the ones we're going to be talking about today, and where lets you pick the rows that you're talking about. Remember in CardoDB, where is actually going to, the rows rather, are going to be the features that you're mapping. So where lets you pick which features you want to map.
Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, right, where lets you choose rows from a table. And if you combine the select and where statements, you can say, I only want these columns from these rows. So you can say specifically exactly what you want. So here's an example of using a select clause and a where clause together. Select star from earthquakes, where mag is greater than 6, and mag is greater, less than 7. I'm going to copy this on over to my window and run that. And so where says um, it lets you compare a column with a value. And in this case, it's comparing this mag column to the value 6. So it's saying everything has to be greater than 6. And you can see, um, just eyeballing it, that everything in is indeed greater than 6. Um, and it adds another condition to make it even more specific. And the magnitude has to be less than 7. So you don't see anything over 7 here, here either. OK. So why don't you give this a shot? Uh, try this on a table that you have. If you have the earthquakes table, then use that. If you have something else, use that. Uh, just get me the, earth, the earthquakes or whatever feature you have with magnitude between 7 and 7.5. Give that a shot. OK. So one problem that you might have had while running that query was um, if your column is not a number, then comparing it with a number is going to be confusing to CardoDB and most databases. So if I pick one of my string columns and say, uh, and compare that string to a number, like mag type, and try to run that. Um, then it says error loading rows, check your SQL query. And down here, you can see that specific error message. Error does not exist comparing text to an integer using the greater than sign. So I'm going to clear this view. Um, so hopefully if you had a problem, that was the problem. And you can go back to your data. And if that was indeed a number, then you can go ahead and change the type of the column to number so that you can run that SQL statement. Okay. These are the conditions that you can use in SQL where statements. There are some others, but these are the basic ones. We've already seen, seen greater than and less than. There's also equals and not equals. And then greater than or equal and less than or equal. So these, these will let you do most of the comparisons that you'll need to do when you're comparing numeric columns. The equal and not equal are going to be the most useful in these when you're talking about strings. So as we already saw, you can use AND in your WHERE clause to combine conditions. You can also use OR. But first, let's look at AND again. I'm going to copy this query over and then talk about it. So you can see when I run this statement, you only get one row, one feature that matches it. And that's because it's looking for only earthquakes that are greater than 6 and also have their place field set to northern mid-Atlantic ridge. So mag greater than 6 is true here. And if we scroll over to the place column, you can see that it is also correct. Um, so an AND in your WHERE clause says all of these conditions have to be true for every row in the table that you're talking about. Okay. In, um, in contrast, you have the OR keyword. Otherwise, this query is exactly the same. I'm going to replace AND with OR and run that query. You can see you get a lot more rows back. 
And the reason you get a lot more rows is all it's all this condition is saying is give me all the earthquakes with mag greater than six. And in addition to that, give me all the plate all the earthquakes with place equal to northern mid Atlantic Ridge. So you'll see that you have a lot of mag over six, but you also have one that's only five. And the reason that that, that 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 is included is that it has place set to northern mid-Atlantic ridge. So OR is more inclusive. The other thing you'll find yourself doing is negating a condition by putting NOT before it. So here's using the same example we were just looking at. You could say, give me just the earthquakes where this whole thing is not true. So it gives you the opposite of this current view. If you wanted to say, I want to see actually all of the ones that I'm not seeing when I run this query, then you put not here, and then you surround your condition in parentheses. So you can see now I only have um, earthquakes with mag less than or equal to 6, and I shouldn't have any in the mid-Atlantic, northern mid-Atlantic ridge. All right, hope that makes sense. So one thing that's not totally obvious looking at this statement is what the parentheses are doing. If I remove these parentheses, then the not only applies to mag greater than 6. So it will give me earthquakes where mag is less than or equal to 6, or they have this place. So there aren't, there aren't any good examples of that in here, but um, one way of thinking of the not in this case is all it's really doing is changing the greater than operator to a less than or equal to operator, the opposite of what it was saying before but it's not doing it to the rest of your condition because there are no parentheses. When you put the parentheses in, it says, look at everything in these parentheses and then negate that. Okay, why don't you try doing this too? Um, get just the earthquakes or whatever feature you have with some numeric column not between a range. Okay, so it's important to remember that select is not going to change your table. It's only going to change your view of the table. So you can't really break anything in CardoDB by writing a bad select query. You could say select star from I could make my query one that doesn't make any sense. So like um, select star from my earthquakes, um, you'll see that it says my earthquakes does not exist down here. But I didn't break anything. I can always just go here and clear it. Everything's fine. I can say select star from earthquakes where mag less than zero doesn't make any sense. But I didn't break anything. It's just a different view, and I can clear that view, and everything's still intact. You can also use select to get a better idea of what kind of data is in your table. The most common thing that you'll be doing is collect selecting count, and in parentheses, star. And that just says, give me the count with all the columns. Okay. So I'm going to copy this on over so you can see what that does. You see that it only gives you one column called count, and it has a value in that column, 547. So that's saying that there are 547 rows that match this condition. So if I said, if I added my not back in here, you could see that there are 7,700 that match that condition. Okay. 
Um, so it doesn't really make sense to use uh, select count in your map. And here's an example of doing that. If you added a count and then went to the map view, it's going to just say, um, it's going to say that there is nothing to map, essentially. And why don't I just do that here? Um, we're already selecting a count. I'm going to click the map view. And you see that nothing is mapped. And you get a little bit of an error message that says the geom web mercator column should be selected. And what that is, this the geom web mercator, that is a column in your table that you can't see that's hidden from you that has the geometry for the feature. So if the if you're not selecting a geometry for your features, then CardiDB has nothing to map. And it's just letting you know that it doesn't really make sense to try to map the, the SQL query that you're making. Okay, why don't you try it yourself? Get the number of earthquakes with mag between 7 and 7.5. If you're using another table, just get the number of features with a number column between two values. And why don't you try to map it while you're at it just to see um, how that does not work. Okay, so we're, we've been talking about select, which just gives you a different view on your database tables. You can also use SQL to update and delete tables from your data, rows from your table, rather. Sorry about that. Um, those two statements will destroy data, so you want to make sure that you're testing this out on data that doesn't matter too much, or make sure that you have a backup, for sure. So one example of this would be um, maybe you want a new column in your database that is the one that you'll just use for displaying in your info window, and you want to base that on some data, some other column. So you could create that new column. In this case, I'm calling it mag display. And you can say update the table, set this column to this value, huge, and only do that for the rows that match this condition. And of course, the condition could be any of the conditions that we were just talking about. And the other statement is a bit scarier. This can actually delete rows from your table. It's really simple, though. It's delete from, and then the table name, and then your where condition. I couldn't think of any earthquakes I'd actually want to delete, so I left this empty. But you can imagine that um, maybe you just you have some data in your table that is never going to be useful. So it, sometimes it makes sense to go ahead and delete it. Usually, I would just filter it out and not show it on the map, though. Okay, uh, there's more in the SQL cheat sheet about specifically about finding out information about your data, finding the range of your data, um, grouping things by categories, and getting the counts to really get a good idea of what's in your database. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of it here. I think hopefully you can use this as a basis for figuring out how the rest of that should work. So why why are we talking about SQL? It shows up everywhere online, on the internet. Um, one example, this is a little bit simplified, but if you look at 596acres.org, each lot has its own page, and the URL looks like this. It ends with this string of numbers. And um, in New York City, this string of numbers is an identifier for a parcel, and that parcel is called a this that identifier is called a BBL. So you can imagine roughly the what's happening in 
the application is we're saying select everything from some table called lots where the BBL is whatever is in the URL. And if you wanted to think a little bit more abstractly about this, you could think about how um, you or I have a browser open with an application in that browser, and that through that application we make a request to some backend system on a server somewhere, and that backend system generates some SQL, like select star from lots, where the BBL is what we want it to be, and it sends that SQL to the database to get the information out so that it can display it back to the application. Okay, so um, since CardoDB is a database, let's talk about how you might actually go about using this in a web application. Here is one way that you could do that. Um, this is a long URL, but it's actually really simple. It's um, HTTP, my username, .cardodb.com, slash API, slash v2, slash, and then SQL, question mark, Q equals, and after Q equals, you can put any SQL statement you want to. So if I had an application that um, wanted to display the number of earthquakes with a magnitude over 7, this is one way I could do it. I could make that application generate this SQL and ask Cardoby CardoDB for the answer. And I'll open the results in a new tab here. And you can see um, it tells you how long that took and what the fields are. But the really interesting part is down here where it says um, count is 66. That's the answer. That's um, if you were looking at this statement in CardoDB, this, this is the row that you'd see, and this is the header for that row, and that's the value. Um, obviously, when we actually use this URL, it all goes on one line, but it's hard to look at that one line because it actually has to end up pr being pretty small. So um, I back here, I put it on multiple lines so you could better see the SQL query. But really, when you put it in a browser, obviously, it's going to look more like this. OK, so here's another query. The only difference is that I removed the count. And I'm going to open this in a new tab and going to close my old one. And you can see you get a lot more data this way, a whole lot more. And what this is doing is, select, remember, select star selects all of the columns. So this is actually all of the columns for those 66 earthquakes. Um, some of them aren't going to make a lot of sense to you, like the Geom Web Mercator. You can see that it is a string of bits, essentially, in hex. And um, this can be translated to a geometry. Uh, but you also have the latitude and longitude in a way that you can very much read. And you can also see things like depth and mag and mag type. OK? So, so that can be useful if you wanted to say list the earthquakes, or obviously whatever other feature type you're talking about. If you wanted to list those in your web app, then you could just use this URL to pull that data. And now that I've shown you those examples, you can formulate this as a generic formula that you could use on any public tables, and it would look like this. HTTP colon backslash 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 then your username dot cardodb.com slash api slash v2 slash sql question mark q q stands for query in this case equals and then your query
Okay, and going back to this diagram that I was talking about earlier, you can think of an application, a web app, um, any website that you're interacting with as being um, your browser running that application. That application makes a request that goes to some server somewhere, and that's generating SQL that it sends to a database. Um, with CardaDB, oftentimes you're going to be doing something a bit simpler where you don't really have a backend running, but CardaDB kind of stands in for both your backend and your database. So it can make making web apps that have maps in them a lot simpler because you can actually make your website, your application, generate SQL and get the answer from CardaDB. When you're doing this, I recommend that you actually write your query in some text editor and then turn it into a URL. It can be hard to type it out in your browser in the location bar here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so that's all I have for SQL with CardoDB. Hope that was helpful. I'm going to post this with links to the slides, and um, I think that's it. All right, thanks.